that are here and they are only Sunday church members. And they are not, they are not sons, they are Sunday church members. You don't know what I'm talking about, so you will have to recap everything that happened throughout the week. But God has loved you so much that he sent his own prophet from his country where he's so much loved, they don't want to miss him, but he's, he is saying, live again. He is declaring, live. I still want you. I still want you to do well in your life. I still want you to thrive. I want you to awaken. Yes, you need to develop this love for God in such a way that you don't become a chairwoman, but you serve in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Who received the blessing of the first today? First coming to the service today. <laughs> Some want to understand and catch the revelation, but I just want us to stand, to stand to appreciate God for what he has done. You are his people. He loves you. He, he has cleansed you. There are so many things that you have to thank God for. He has forgiven you of your in iniquities. He has healed you of all your diseases. He has redeemed you from your destruction. He, he has crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He has satisfied your mouth with good things. You are able to dine. You are able to eat his word and enjoy his word. When others are not enjoying, you are able to enjoy. And when in you enjoy, don't forget his word. Observe it. He's renewing you. Have you ever seen your youth like an eagle? Have you ever seen people that are out there? You can see they, they are not shining, but you have the glory of the Lord with you. You can thank him. You can thank him. And thank you, Pastor Chishonga, for coming. I thank you for leaving your church and coming here. Hallelujah. Uh, my people, the Nesangani family, you are welcome. I, you know, God has blessed me with eyesight. At my age, you know, I was trying to subtract from 70. And I said, what? 14 years left. 14, one, four left. But I'm going, I'm going to exercise. <laughs> I'll be exercising. I'm saying 120. What's that word in Hebrew? 120. Maya v Isrim. So Maya v Isrim to me. <laughs> Maya v Isrim to me. Maya v Isrim to me. It's a blessing of 120 years. And I want to be strong. I don't want, I, I don't want to be struggling in my 120th. Hallelujah. So let's stand as we thank the Lord and blessing him for our breath, for your heart that is still beating. So you, for your legs that are still walking, carrying you from wherever you are coming here, Father, we bless you this morning. Father, we honor you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We worship you, Lord. Thank you for every breath that we take every day. We bless you, Lord, for life, life in abundance. We thank you, Lord, for clothing us with your glory, with your glory. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. God above the skies. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Father, for your mercy, for your loving kindness. Your mercy endureth forever and ever. Thank you for your deliverances. Thank you, Father, for healing. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you, Father, for healing our souls, our minds, our hearts, our physical bodies. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing us from pains of the past. We bless you for delivering us from the community of the demons that were following us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As we arise, as we shine, 
as we shine in your presence, oh God. Mariba Sata Rabayanda Rabosieta Marianda Rabosieta. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Mandia Raba Sata Rabayanda Rabosieta Marianda Rabosieta. Thank you for adorning us, oh God, with your glory. Thank you for cleansing us with the precious blood of Jesus. Mariba Sata Marianda Rabosieta Marianda Rabosieta. Thank you for cutting our umbilical cords from the Hittites, from the Canaanites. Thank you, Jesus. Monda Raba Sietere Marianda Raboshieta. Mandi Raba Sietere Marianda Raboshieta. The Lord God is your name. The Lord who sees. Thank you for seeing us in trouble and rescuing us. Thank you, Lord, for seeing us going to destruction and rescuing us. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Savior. Marianda Rabo Shata Rabayanda Rabo Sieter Marianda Rabo Sieta. What the Lord God has done to us, it's uncountable. We bless you, Lord, for your mercies, your everlasting mercies. We bless you, Lord, for your love. Yes, Lord, from generation to generations, you remain the same. Your mercies endureth from generation to generations. Our generation is enjoying you. Our families are enjoying you. Our children are enjoying you. And they will never be lost because you are their teacher. We bless you, Lord. Be glorified forever. Amen. God bless you and enjoy the service. Now, I've never seen anyone who has been freed and want to remain in prison. Hallelujah. Whoever that get freed, they walk out of the gates of prison and they go to their resting place, their homes. Hallelujah. So we have been delivered in this conference and we're not remaining where the chains are. But we are moving out. We are saying the heavens are green. The heavens are open. The heavens are saying, yes, you can prosper. Hallelujah. So So I want to see those that are saying, yes, the heavens have agreed so that my deliverance has come. And I will not remain bounded. And I'm moving out from the prison gates. So prison will never see me again. And I'm going to be dancing, praising the Lord, declaring that yes, I have my freedom. So I, I fool me.
Lord, we worship you. We give you glory. Oh, take all the honor, Lord. Take all the honor. And we command our souls this morning to bless you, oh God. To bless you, oh Father, and forget not your benefits. We command our spirits, oh God, to bless you, to bless you, and forget not your benefits. Oh, we command our minds, oh Father, to come before you, to give you, oh God, that which is due to you. And all nights, what you deserve from us, worship is what you deserve from us. Yes, oh God, we lift your name. We glorify you. We say, holy is the Lamb of God that was slain. Worthy to take the scroll are you, O oh God. Worthy to take the scroll are you, O oh Jesus. Worthy to take the scroll are you. Oh, hara 
Rabaya Sande Broya Sikaya Badada Dabaya Minda Bro Sate de Debea Sukarabaya Dada Dabaya Rabba Baba Sutaya Neketi Riba Baba Baba Suyaba Nikamambro Sataya de Debea Suya Dada Daba Holy are you Lamb of God that was slain Oh Shada Dada Baya Sinda Baya Ndo Broya Saya Dada Daba
the Lord in his heart wants to deliver the whole person. Amen. As we were also taught from 1 Thessalonians 5.23, where Paul says, may you be sanctified completely. May your spirit, soul, and body be found blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the whole person. And as the Lord has released and has been declaring through this conference, leave. You have received your Abraham. <laughs> the breath of God. I'm free. The, the breath of God. <laughs> so just add a heart in your name because of what you have received. You see, the Bible says if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, he who raised Jesus from the dead quickens our mortal bodies. He gives life. Hallelujah. So let there be life in your spirit, man. Let there be life in your soul, man, in your mind, in your physical body. So as we worshiping the Lord, the Lord wants me to read this verse for you. Because if you don't keep your mind checked also by His Spirit, because your mind is important before God. It says in Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, Meditate on these things. When we have been taken out or have been given life, this is how God expects of us to function. Removing all negativity even from our minds. Embracing love. <laughs> even in your mind. Even in your mind. What a faithful God. We've had a great time in the presence of the Lord here. The Lord has been shifting things as we are. We've been awakened and we have been arising in different, you know, from different levels so that we may begin to run for our increase. There's a place you must step into for your increase. If you remain confined in the same place, when you have been bound for a long time, we, we have seen this with a chicken. If you bind it, just for a few minutes, a chicken, summer, just for a few minutes, you know, because we will be sent to buy chicken, you know, during our time, you would go buy a live chicken. out, And when you bring it home, and you start, the first thing you want to do is to play with it. You untie it, and you want it to go. It's not tight, but it jumps like a grasshopper. <laughs> so you can say, I'm not a grasshopper. <laughs> I eat grapes. <laughs> so when you are free, exercise your liberty. Hallelujah. When the word has been released, you then begin to live like one who has received that word. Don't go back to your old nature. The Bible says, put off the old man, the old man, and put on the new. We keep on putting the new. You know, just like clothes. You don't put on the same clothes, even if they are new. You can't put on the same clothes the whole year. There's time to take off, put on new take off put on new and 
We really want to thank the Lord for this wonderful time that we had in the presence of God. Um, and the man of God came here with about four, three um, of his leaders, uh, one elder and two deacons, and some sons who are locally here, like Dr. Ashley joined him. Um, I don't know, somebody else came, uh, um, uh, 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 who is also a son, gave me a card right there um, with a son to bishop and who are based locally here. Um, and they've come to support him. So from the 28th to the 1st of 28th September, as was announced, to the 1st of October, we have been invited to go and minister at his church. They have a conference during that time. Uh, myself and Apostle uh, Shandukani, they will be going there to minister, but we are saying uh, for those of you that would like to go with us, you can already register your names so that we may know that you are more than one, two, three, four, five, so that we know you are more than five or six that, you know, he has brought. We want to beat them at that. <laughs> So, so register your names, give an indication of, you know, if you really want to go and so that we can make appropriate plans. Just like the Israel um, uh, tour, there are plans we must make, put in place. That's why you must register on time. So for those of you that cannot make it during that particular time of May with the Israel tour now, uh, register your name and give an indication of the time period or at least give an indication you want to go but you can't go during this time so that we can then begin to see how can we also still save you hallelujah praise the lord we have really had a wonderful time uh, uh, bishop and thank you for releasing what god had placed in your heart to release in this church and the purpose of God is being accomplished and we give God the honor for everything that was released here in Jesus mighty name hallelujah and we want to take this time therefore to receive Bishop as he ministers the last word for this conference and we want to give him as much time as possible as he pours out everything that God has placed in his heart to release in this church and we are so grateful to God and church as we honor the servant of the Lord a gift in the house uh, a gift in the kingdom it's a gift in this house this morning hallelujah praise the Lord come on let's give the Lord the praise and honor as we receive him in Jesus name Praise the Lord, hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. I just want you to greet about seven people. Today, I, I want you to greet someone that you haven't greeted for a long time. Or maybe someone you are seeing for the first time. I want you to just prophesy in Hebrew the same way. Say, Maya v. Israel. Live up to 120 years. Just move around. Greet someone. Greet someone. Hallelujah. Can you prophesy like you are alive? <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 
we want to, before we sit down, I just want us to celebrate our father, the father of the house, hallelujah, and our prophetess, Nechifefe, uh, and Apostle Humphrey, hallelujah. The man who has a name with the hum, hallelujah. We were, uh, with the breath of God, so we want to celebrate them. Can we make some noise and celebrate our parents? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We, you, are, you are so blessed to have this couple. They are a wonderful couple. Uh, when we met them with the prophetess, we saw Jesus in them. We saw the anointing in their lives. And you are blessed to be under such a covering. Don't take it as a joke. Some of you, you take uh, things that are uncommon, common. It's a sin of familiarity where you treat that which God has made uncommon, common. So you need to learn to honor the Father, the covering that God has given you if you want to go far. We will talk also about that even as we go today. Are you ready to cruise? Yeah. Can, can you tell the person next to you, say, can you put on your seatbelt? The plane is about to take off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, put on your seatbelts because there might be turbulence up there. Hallelujah. All right, lift your hands. Let me pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We bless your people. I pray for your presence, your power, and your glory to come down. Touch us, O oh Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your name today. Let your presence, let your glory, and your power be upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, for your glory and your grace today in Jesus' name. Let doors that were closed open in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May all the people shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. We may be seated in the presence of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to be today uh, teaching on the laws, the laws of increase. Let's all say the principles, keys, and laws of increase. Can you shout aloud the principles, the keys, and the laws of increase? Because we are running with the theme, surge of increase. The Bible says, uh, uh, can you go? Can you give me that scripture? Is Exodus chapter one verse five, which is our theme scripture. We are running with the theme um, Exodus one verse seven, which says, "But the children of Israel were fruitful, and they increased abundantly, multiplied, grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them." So the theme that I was given is a surge of increase to how to awaken and to arise and advance uh, for, a, uh, for an expo, expo uh, it was written, uh, now I'm now losing the word, is it exponential or something, increase. So I want you to get this very well, that God wants you to increase in everything that you do. Can you lift your, your, your ten fingers? Say, in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Say, I receive, I receive an, increase an increase in the name of Jesus. Can you stand up on your feet? I want you to say, I am rising. I am rising. Say, I am, I am advancing in the name of Jesus. As I, As I increase, lift both hands and begin to clap your hands above your head. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now give what is called a, wave, a prophetic wave offering. Say, this is where I belong. Yeah. Say, I belong up there. Belong. 
Wave your hand, say, I belong up there. In Jesus' name. Can we shout amen? amen? We may take our seats in the presence of the Lord. Now let me give you the first law. Can we all open our Bibles in the book of Genesis chapter 2? We want to talk about the law. It's, an, it's a powerful law. Which is in Genesis 2, verse 10 to 14. A very powerful, a very powerful law that is there. Let me read from verse 10. Now a river went out of Eden. I just want you to write the law of the four streams of income. The law of the four streams of income. All right. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden and from there it parted and became four streams. Let's all shout four streams. Other versions they say four river heads. So the name of the first one was Pishon. It is the one which skirts the whole land of Havila where there is gold and the gold of that land is good, delium and the onyx stones are there. So this is a powerful exponential law. Verse 13, the name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Hidekel. It is the one which goes towards the east of Assyria. The fourth river is Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. May we all say amen. amen. Now I want you to understand something, people of God. That God will never put you in a garden without giving you streams of income. Can we shout streams of income? Now a human being who is created by God, must live with at least four streams of income in their lives. You are not allowed to live on earth if you want to see an increase, if you want to operate well in the garden. Because before even the man was put in the garden, God made sure that there were four streams, four river heads. These are river heads. Because the word head, it talks of authority areas, power areas, which makes you to survive on earth. So if you are living with less than four streams of income, there is no way you can increase. So the first one, I just want you to write, uh, the first stream which you must have, it is the stream Gihon. Let's all say Gihon. That is G-I-H-O-N, uh, which is there, which was given to Adam so that he may survive. Now, the word Gihon, it's an Aramic word which you also find in Hebrew. Now, that word, can you write, it means something that is a natural, a natural occurrence or something that comes natural, uh, like a pool is natural or a river, a stream, is natural. So um, I wrote it in this, I wrote that principle in this book called Be a Farmer and Not a Hunter. Now the reason why I wrote this book because I noticed that Africans, they live according to their DNA. Remember the black man, because I was tracing the origins of a black man to see why Africa uh, is in poverty, why there is uh, corruption in Africa. So I was writing this book 
uh, a word for Africa when I went to, to launch uh, uh, the diamond polishing project in Botswana under Debswana when the company invited me there and I launched also the Blessing Connector. So when I was telling them that the problem with Africa is that we haven't traced the limitation of our bloodline because we came from a man that is called Kush. And Kush was a son of Canaan. And Kush had a black skin. Now, and if you trace the history of Kush, Kush also uh, uh, later on uh, gave uh, birth also to, to a son who was called Nimrod, who was a hunter who came towards Africa. That's why our history as Africans, it has to do with hunting. That's why if you go in all the caves, whether in Namibia, South Africa, you see bushmen, you see people with spears hunting animals because that's where we derive our DNA. It is a DNA of hunting. But the problem of hunting is this. Hunters, are, they don't use their brains most of the times because what they just do is they just run into the bush and make sure they hunt for animals. They, they work very hard. That's why Africans are hard workers. But we, we, we do less of creativity because hunters are not creative people. That's why you notice we weapons. All that we are using, even our governments, our armies are being imported from, uh, from Europe, from, uh, from Asian countries. Us as Africans here, we live hand to mouth. Uh, because of that hunting DNA which is in us. So we, we only live from hand to mouth. So it's not easy to free an African from that power. So we usually move with that one stream of income, just using our strength. That's why we can mine diamond, but we can't polish it. We mine uh, gold, but we, we, we can't do anything about it. Even Zimbabwe right now. It's one of the most well-resourced nation in Africa, yet it is poor. They discovered about 70 minerals, and Zimbabwe has discovered lithium. It's a gas used uh, to make the batteries that we use in solar systems, it's, and it's being exported to other nations, but we don't have solar batteries in our nations. And, uh, and people are suffering, yet it's producing billions. It's giving the nation billions of dollars. So this is the spirit that needs to be broken, the spirit of hunting. So I, I always tell people that even if I, if I want to prove to you that you are a hunter, I, I will just ask you, do you have anyone seated next to you who has a 2024 diary? Can you check if there is anyone with a 2024 diary? So you will notice even some of the people here are writing notes in a, in a, in a, in a 22, 2022 diary in 2023, which means even in 2022, they didn't use it to plan their lives. And now they are now writing notes and in a diary written 2022, and they are writing their notes on, on a page written 22 April. Yet we are, we are already in August. So we don't know even how to plan our lives. We are limited, so we need to, to be delivered so that we get the farming ability, the farming mindset. So these are some of the things that we are going to be talking about so that we destroy the spirit of a hunter. The reason why Esau was always behind his brother, it was because Esau was a hunter. And Jacob was a farmer. So you notice even when Esau came, he, do you know that he was born with, with, a, with a jacket put by heaven on his body? The Bible says he had a hairy body. God noticed that this guy, when I release him, he, he won't think. He doesn't have all brains on him. So we better clothe him even before he comes out. And he came out with a hairy gummy, a hairy body, because God knew he was going to be a hunter. So by the time you would come with a prey, 
to his father, his brother Jacob, the farmer, would have already taken the blessing. So farmers are always ahead of hunters. So if we remain hunting in Africa, and we are operating below the streams of income that we are supposed to operate with, we will not make it, we will not increase as we are supposed to. So let me just give you quickly, I said, Gion, it's, it's a natural thing. Now, this is talking about the natural talents that you were born with. So you were born, every human being was born with folded hands like this. There is nobody who is born with open arms. So when you are coming out of your mother's womb, you come out with folded hands. What it means is that I am carrying a talent. I am carrying something. Do you know that every human being on earth is a talent, a natural talent that they were given by God. But the problem is you haven't discovered it. Because maybe you were less privileged when you were growing up. Maybe you were never exposed to a school which allowed you to explore all the areas in your life. Because nowadays there are schools uh, that uh, have sports, that have arts, and so forth. And it's not just academics. So you need, so they make children, especially some white schools, to explore all the things so that they, they make sure that they discover their talent. They will encourage you to do almost everything at the school so that you discover what is in you. Because in your talent, that's where your first million dollar is put by God. God puts your money in your talent, your natural talent. That's why you have got fingerprints that are different from everybody else. And even the Bible says that you were wonderfully and fearfully made. You were wonderfully and fearfully made. The, the reason why you were fearfully made in brackets, that word fearful, it meant God was afraid when he was shaping your nose, shaping your ears. He was afraid that you may look like someone else. He fearfully made you so that you don't look like your brother. You don't look like your aunt. There is nobody on earth with facial features like yours. And there is nobody who ever lived with a face like yours. And who shall live? This is the power of God is very dynamic. Let's clap hands to such a God. So, so the Lord spoke to me that everybody that I brought on earth is supposed to be a celebrity in their own making. Can you shake someone next to say you are sitting next to a celebrity who doesn't know he is one. Just shake them. Say you are speak, sitting next to a celebrity. But unfortunately you don't know it. So you have some natural talents. Now these ones, uh, the gion, is something that you, you came with. You don't need to be born again to have a talent. Lionel Messi is making money because of a talent of football. Cristiano Ronaldo, some of these guys are not even born again. They just discovered their talents and they are now very wealthy because of their talents. Some people can box, some can do stuff, some can do uh, uh, some other things or play netball, and some can draw uh, some stuff they are into arts. So you need to know your talent. I'm going to pray for you because your talent is to bring solutions. So when you solve problems, then you prosper. So you were born to solve a certain problem. Can you shake someone next to say, my brother, my sister next to, say you were born to solve a certain problem in my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were born to solve problems. Number two, the river number two, it's Hitekel. Hitekel. Hitekel, which is, which means, or Tigris. Hitekel. H i double d e k e l or tigris, which means a rabbit, as small as a rabbit. Now this one represents the second stream called a salary or employment. Now a salary is just like as small as a rabbit. 
Because a salary is enough for you to use in a month. So the reason why they give you a salary is because they know that it's a rabbit that will keep you uh, continue coming to work. You have to continue coming to work. Why? Because you use it in 30 days, and the next 30 days you have to rush again to work so that you get the next salary. So it's just a small rabbit for you to survive. There is nobody who can become wealthy with a salary. You can be rich with a salary, but not wealthy. Wealthy is another realm higher than riches, where you now, now have properties and so forth. So you need to increase beyond just a salary. You must discover a natural talent, and then you must get also a salary. So uh, yeah, you need one. So you need all the streams. Let's go to stream number three. Uh, stream number three, it is Pison, P-I-S-O-N. It was the, the first river, Pishon or Pison in other versions. It means dispersive in Hebrew or diversification. Dispersive or diversification. And it talks of business. It's business. Now the Bible says, when we read in Genesis chapter 2, verse 10, it says there was a river Pishon which skirts the whole land of Havila, and there is gold there. So in, the, in this land, that's where you get gold. So business is the ability to make you a multimillionaire. So I'm going to pray for people here in this church to have the blessing, a prophetic blessing, to have what we call prophetic business ideas. I want to lay hands on some people so that you get the ability to start a business that will bring millions to your family. Usually these businesses, they come prophetically. Whilst you are even sometimes in prayer, God will make you to have a revelation of something. And when it comes in that manner, nobody can compete with you. Because it will be a blessing from God. Then the last river, the last stream is Euphrates. E-U-P-H-R-A-T-E-S. Euphrates. Euphrates is breaking forth. It means to break forth into fruitfulness and increase. That's where we have the, ori the, it's the origins of the name Ephraim or Ephraim or the Ephraimites, which were the fruitful people, the fruitful tribe of Israel. So the Ephraimites. Now that's why Jehovah God is called in Hebrew Jehovah Ephraim, which means the Lord who is Euphrates, the Lord who is fruitful. Now this is a spiritual dimension and it's a prophetic realm where you get harvest. It also means harvest. So these are blessings now. That comes, you friends, it's, a, it's income. That comes to you because of pressing some spiritual buttons or some keys, knowing certain spiritual principles like faith seeding, sowing, offerings, and certain spiritual actions. Now, that is the highest realm, because remember, the spiritual world is superior than the natural. So the natural realm, the physical realm, is inferior to the spiritual realm. So the spiritual realm controls all earthly matters. If you see COVID coming on earth, and we are now in lockdowns, what it means is the body of Christ has been defeated in the spirit. There is nothing that occurs on earth without a defeat in the spiritual realm. If you see an attack coming into your life, it means there is a day when you are defeated in the spiritual realm. So it does not manifest in the physical realm without manifesting first in the spirit. That's why Jesus said to the men who had leprosy, the ten guys, he said, go to the priest 
and testify that you are now healed. But the Bible says as they were going, they were, they were still leprous. Their bodies still had leprosy. But as they took action of faith, as they were going, they discovered by the time they reached the synagogue, their bodies were now healed. So Jesus had already seen their healing before they testified. So this is a powerful realm. Now I want everyone to listen. If you want to increase, you must learn spiritual keys of increase. Because your life came from the spiritual realm. You were known by God, the Bible says, before you were put in your mother's womb. God knew you. God ordained you to be somebody before Jeremiah. You were in your mother's womb. So which means a human being is spiritual. So your birthday is not the day you were born. Your birthday is the day when God conceived you in his mind. That's the day when you were born. So you didn't come by accident. You were actually a, a plan of heaven. You were an idea of God. And then God de just looked for a couple somewhere, somewhere that was in love and deposited you so that you come on earth. But that's not your birthday. You are older than your years. You are older than your physical years. You are so powerful. So you have to know that. that so you are a spiritual being. Now, I want to give you some spiritual principles quickly. So I said, uh, from today, everybody here, I'm going to pray for you to receive four streams of income. Can you lift your hands? Say, Lord Jesus. Lift both hands. Say, I receive the four streams of income in my life in the name of Jesus. Shout amen. amen. Now, the first, the second law, that I want to teach you, can you write the law or the principle of avoiding sinning against your body? Now, I want you to listen. If you are to increase, increase comes to the body. God brings a surge of increase so that your body may be blessed. So that your body may increase because everything that God is going to give you, even the increase, must be enjoyed by your body. Whether it's food, it's your body that must enjoy that food. It's your stomach that must enjoy that food. If it's a car, it's you, it's your mind, you, your hands must drive that car. It's, you, it's your legs that must, that must also put, be put on the pedal, on the accelerator, so that you enjoy. If it's a house, God wants your body to enjoy the house. So the reason why we are blessed is for your body on earth, which houses your soul and your spirit, to enjoy the blessings of God on your way to heaven. Because God doesn't want you to be sick. Because he knows you will go to heaven suffering. So he wants you to have a good body. Now I want us to open 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 13. If you can put it on the screen I will be very happy. First from 13 to 16. There is something that I just want to teach people here. Uh, can we... Can we talk about this a little bit. Put it on the screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 chapter 6 sorry verse 13 I want us to, to read together so that because before I tell, teach you other things we have to get this one right. We have to get this one right. The, any, please put on the screen that scripture if you can. Verse 13 I will start from there. It says, foods are for the stomach and the stomach for foods. Let's all say foods are for the stomach. And the stomach is for the food, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body and God both raised up the Lord and will raise up us up by his power. Now, God is saying even your body, it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It is for God. 
All right, we go to verse 15. It says, do you not know, do you not know that your bodies, that is now verse 15, are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a hallowed? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a hallowed is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. The two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does. All right. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Now, there is a sin called the sin of sexual immorality. And many people do this sin without knowing that they are sinning against their own body. Now, on your body, that's where your hands are. On, because the, when you are doing business, you do business with your hands. That's why the Bible says, I will bless the works of your hands. So, which means when you sin against your own body, you are now sinning against against even your hands which are on your body. So when you then go and touch your business, instead of it increasing, it crashes. Now, have you noticed that most of you, you, you had powerful fathers or uncles in your family that had businesses, but the moment they started uh, acquiring girlfriends, or started sinning sexually and having multiple women, their businesses crashed. Why? Because they were sinning against their own bodies. Now the Bible is saying when you join your, when you join your body with a woman or a, with a man, you are now one with that man. Now I, I just want to, to demonstrate something here. I, I, allow me please, cameraman, to come down so that I, I explain something so that I help someone. So what happens when you are born, you are born with a soul like this paper here, complete. But when you sleep with someone sexually, what you, 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 a portion of your life is removed. Let's say you sleep with a Peter. You are a lady, you sleep with a Peter maybe from Cape Town, Peter goes with a piece of your life and you are now like this. And then you, you sleep around again with John from Vendaland. <laughs> Hallelujah. From Limpompo. And then you, what you are not noticing, your, your piece, another piece is gone and you are now like this. Then you, you come here in Jobek, and another guy says, I love you, called Tulani, a Zulu guy. And you, you, you sleep with Tulani, and Tulani takes a portion of your life. So when you, when you now then maybe you then come to the house of God. When you come, you are now like this. You are now small like this. That's why a lot of people have got problems in their marriages. Because you married a wife that hasn't collected herself. Because they, they, they tore their lives, their, the portions of their lives, and they gave them to different people. Because now listen, when, when you sleep with Tulani, a Zulu guy, and he comes maybe, let's say, from a family where nobody owns even a bicycle. And the Bible says you are now one flesh with him, which means the demons of Tulani are now your demons. Your life is now covenanted with him, so you now carry his tribe and his clan in your body. Then that Peter from Cape Town, maybe in their family, they, they all die at 40. 
So you covenanted yourself with, with that person. So you now have got so many clans, tribes, and families in you. That's why some of you, you don't even understand yourself. Because you are carrying all these things. So you can't increase when you are keeping on sinning against your body. So that's why you must protect your body. If you are a girl, keep yourself a virgin if you have never met a man. If you have never met a man, keep yourself like that. Keep your body for your husband. Because you will not have a strong marriage when you keep on sleeping around with all sorts of people. But I thank God that today we are going to do some deliverance. Hallelujah. So what we are going to do in deliverance, I'm going to collect all the pieces in the spirit. Hallelujah. We are going to collect all of them so that we put you together again. Can somebody shout glory? glory. Shout I receive. I receive. Can you shake someone next to you say don't sin against your own body? Because it's, yeah, now you, you limit yourself from prospering. Now let's go to the next key. The next key that I just want to teach you, it is the key of sacrifice. Let's all say sacrifice. In life, we reach what are called plateaus at a certain time. A plateau is the highest level of a mountain, and a mountain cannot go cannot grow beyond or below that level. So it's like a ceiling. So we reach what we call plateau levels, even in business. Where once you see, now listen, uh, your, your business is not growing beyond a certain income. Or if you are a pastor, your church is not growing beyond a certain number of people. It means you have reached what is called a life plateau. So when you reach a life plateau, there is something that you need to do to grow beyond that level. Even when you are at work and you get promoted, you go to the ceiling. That is the plateau. And you can no longer grow from that level. So what do you do to keep on increasing? To keep on having surges of increase? How do you break plateaus? So the only way to break a plateau is by learning the art of sacrifice. There must be a sacrifice that you must lay on the altar for an increase to happen in your life. Now, there are two people who brought fire from heaven in the Bible. Just two. It was a prophet and a businessman. It was Elijah the prophet and Solomon the businessman, a king. Because they understood something. That if you want fire that consumes limitations or plateaus, you must sacrifice something. You must sacrifice something. And then you move from that realm of limitations. Now, let's, let's read First Kings. Open First Kings. I want to show you something in First Kings 18, verse 38. First Kings 18, verse 38. First Kings... Chapter 18. Verse 38. I will start from... All right, from 38. I think we all know the story when Elijah was challenging the prophets of Baal. He said, if God is God, let him be worshipped today. Let's put a bull on the altar and you call unto the Lord your God. Because he understood when you put a bull, which is a big offering, a sacrifice, there will be fire that will come from heaven. Now verse 38 says, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust 
and it leaked up the water that was in the trench. Now, the, when I was reading this scripture some time back, God spoke to me and he said, my son, because I was struggling to move my church from 35 members. I told you we had one member that we were pastoring in Blawayo for almost about, um, I think, one or two years. The next year, when it was ending, we now had three members. Then from 2003, when I went to Bulawayo, when I migrated to Bulawayo, up to 20, around 2010, I never pastored more than 35 people until I got this revelation. And that's when I told you, we gave our Mark II, the first car that God had given me. It was the only car that I had, the best car that I had. I had never had a car before, and I sacrificed that car. That's when the game changed in my life. Because a sacrifice is a game changer. A sacrifice makes God to do things that you have never seen in your life. Now, there are five areas that God showed me that when you put a bull on the altar, I break limitations in those five areas. So whenever you give a sacrifice, there is a fire a spiritual fire that you will not see with your own eyes, which comes and consumes five limiting areas of your life or five limitations in your life. Number one, when the fire fell down in First Kings chapter 18, it consumed the burnt sacrifice. Can you, can you write this? Now, this is the defining of your purpose. So God begins to show you who you are. Because a, a, a burnt offering had a purpose, had a reason. So it's talking of purpose. So most of us, we don't know who we are. We don't know why we are on earth. We don't know our reason for existence. It only comes when you put a bull like Elijah did, like Solomon did, he put bulls, not just one. And fire came and consumed the sacrifice. That was in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. Now, number two, what the fire consumed was the wood. Wood, it talks of potential. Because you can ply wood into a, into a wardrobe, into a chair. Wood has potential to be so many things. You can use it to be a curio. So there, there is potential that is stored in you which you don't know. Potential to become a powerful business person. Potential to become a great person. But it only comes when we sacrifice. That's when your wood areas are touched by the Lord. So your, your wood areas, the limitation in your potential is dealt with only by sacrifice. Then number three, it consumed the fire, the stones that were on the altar. These are hard areas. So there were hard areas in my life, rocky, stony areas, which I saw God starting to melt. Because that power, it dissolves your stones. It dissolves your hard areas of life when you sacrifice. So there must be a bull that you must put for your stones to disappear from your life. Then it touched the dust. The dust, the Bible says it leaked up the dust after the stones. Now, the dust are the weaknesses in your body because you were made from dust. You are dust. A human being is dust, and dust shall return to dust. So these are fleshly weaknesses. They are consumed by the power that comes when you offer a bull. A sacrifice is something that you have never given to God. Something that is painful to give, which makes you to turn in your bed in the evening when you are asleep. If you have never given something that makes you to feel pain 
it means you haven't been delivered. If you want limits that are in the flesh to be broken, you must learn to give something that is painful to you. Then the dust is leaked up. Then number five, the fire leaked up the water. Because these are three levels of limitations that bulls, a bull is a big thing. A bull is powerful. It's a sacrifice that goes all your enemies, that punches all your, it attracts heaven to release fire into your life. And then the last, it was the water. It was leaked up. Now, the water areas, God brings fire also to deal with your water areas. These are spiritual revelatory areas. When you give, you begin to read the Bible in the second dimension or third dimension. Many people read the Bible in the first dimension. But if you want to read the Bible in the second dimension, you must learn to sacrifice. When you sacrifice, then you begin to read the Bible which others are not reading, yet you are reading the same Bible. That's why you notice there are some people, when they are explaining scriptures, you'll be saying, but I read this scripture, but I didn't see it that way. Where did they get that revelation? So revelation comes by sacrifice. When you now read the Bible, you begin to see things that you have never seen before. People with great revelation, if you check, they are givers. People who have deep revelations of dynamisms, of, of the dynamics of the spirit, of the spiritual realm, they are great givers. So I decided to be a great giver so that I become a plateau breaker, so that there is no plateau in my life. So it only comes by giving. Now, I, I spoke to some of the girls in our church. There were about five of them who were not being married. One of them was about 48 years old. And the Holy Spirit just said, call those daughters of yours and tell them that as we are building the church, because, we're, because churches are built by sacrifice. Once you see your pastor, now Apostle Humphrey saying, we are now building a church. All of you, you must go on a fasting for three days to celebrate, because what it means is an opportunity to increase his come. An opportunity for some people to sacrifice, to sacrifice so that they are blessed as come. So they sacrificed according to the direction of the Holy Spirit three months salaries. I didn't know. Um, I, I prayed and said, Lord, how are they going to survive? And God said, I, I am their Lord. I will provide. So I just told them. And for sure, all of them, they gave as they were led by the Spirit of God. Three months salaries, it was tough. But what I noticed, they all got married almost at the same time. They all got promoted. They now have got cars, they now have got houses, and they are now blessed because of sacrifice. So when, when we were building the 10,000 seater, we started seeing some young girls who were getting their jobs, sacrificing some salary for seven months. Because that church was built by sacrifice. People were giving their cars, best cars to the Lord and say, prophet, sell this car so that we built the church. So I noticed all the people, most of them, that gave big sacrifices, they all got blessed. And God started prospering them in a mighty way. So I, I also live that life. I told you that I, I gave a house to the church, a mansion in Arare, which I had built. Very beautiful house in a low density area. And I, the Holy Spirit uh, said, can't you see your ministry now is now on a plateau? Because we were now failing to break from a number of about 3,000 members or so. So we decided to build someone a house. We, we saw an article in the newspaper of a, a couple that had triplets. 
that was living in some shacks in Gwanda. We built them a beautiful house with my wife from scratch. We bought a stand. We just approached the newspaper and we said, uh, we want to see this couple that you wrote about with triplets. We drove, we sent people to scout that place and they saw for sure that family was in abject, in, in, in serious poverty. You know, that poverty that is so deep, which I was saying, uh, that is tangible and you can smell it. So we decided to, uh, to bless their children with clothes, send someone to Botswana to buy groceries, and also uh, to build a house for that couple. And we, we, we bought a land, which was quite uh, some, some money, and then we built a very beautiful house. I think it was a four, uh, four or so bedroom house, which we built. Uh, the journalist of some newspapers came when we were handing over the keys. I said, I don't want an article about this. It's a spiritual thing. Please don't write, Prophet Chisa built someone a house. I, I don't want any journalist here because I'm doing this not to show off, but just for God to bless us. We want to break some platoons. And we handed over the keys. And the Lord said, it's not enough. Give your house which you finished building. We put a lot of money into that house. I think if I count, it was more than uh, two million rands or something like that, uh, that we put trying to build that house uh, during that time. So we gave it to the Lord with the title deeds and everything. And I saw my church started moving and growing that's when we started seeing numbers. Nowadays, even in a Sunday service, we have made maybe 6,000 to 7,000 people. And when they are going out, when you go outside, it's like ants when you are seeing them going. You won't notice when they are inside until you see them going back home. That's when you notice that mm, these people are, are so many. So it came because of sacrifice. It's sacrifice is powerful. So I noticed that in Bulawayo, there was no church that had passed a thousand members. And the Lord said, the reason is because in every place where you pastor, there are altars of witchcraft. And there are witches that offer sacrifices on those altars against the churches in that area so that they don't grow. So that people fight when they reach a certain level or a plateau comes. There are also business people here in, in, in Gauteng province and in Pretoria who go to Sangomas and they offer big bulls on altars so that they disqualify other business people. So all of you business people that are in this church, I want you to know that life is altars. Life is won on altars. The battle of life is on altars. If your altar of giving is weaker, if it's not strong, if it's not powerful, the altars of demonic business people that are out there, Indians who are burning to pay, who sacrifice human beings, they will overpower you in business. That's why we have got a lot of Christian business people that are not making it to the level of billions. Why? Because you are being overcome by the sacrifices that are on demonic altars. So you need also to give big sacrifices that cancel the sacrifices of the devil. So when you see yourself as a girl, you are now a lady, 48 years, no man has come to say, I love you. And you are now 48 years, no one has come to propose love. It's a sign that there were some sacrificial covenants that were done on certain altars. So you need to come and bring a big sacrifice to cancel that. Maybe there is an old woman who was angered in your family and went on an altar and gave even the whole uh, crawl, all the kettle, maybe seven fat kettle, 
fed cows and said, the girls in this family, I am angry they didn't give me my Jews or my inheritance. They will not get married. And she snuffed Bute, that snuff that you put in, 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 in your nose. And she declared something under a tree, a spiritual word, a spell of witchcraft, which was cast upon the girls. So if you come in the church and you are giving 100 rand, 200 rand, you won't get married because you are giving below what was sacrificed. You need to know the art of canceling sacrifices. So the Lord said, Bulawayo, it drank blood. It, it had genocide. There was Gukula Hundi. The Belles were killed in this place. And you can't operate without a sacrifice. So that's why I started sacrificing. And I gave more than 14 cars. I'm not talking of scholars, scholars, or of funny cars that can't start. I'm talking of, uh, of BMWs, Mercedes Benz, which I was sacrificing one after the other, one after the other. And sometimes I would walk just to sacrifice. And I became the first pastor in Blawayo to break through beyond a thousand. Even up to now, I think it might be our church that is operating at those levels. Very few people have those numbers. Why? Because I started how to sacrifice. So I started telling my business people that if you want to prosper, learn to sacrifice. Learn to give. Even when we we're building the church with my wife, we came first time, we gave one million runs cash and we said let the project uh, let the project start and then we took another one million runs and we put it into building of the toilets we started the project uh, but i know it was more than that the money that we gave i'm just trying to convert from us dollars to runs but it was more that we gave and the church saw us building with my wife during COVID, and they started coming with money, and things started happening. And as I'm speaking, the levels of blessings that we are now touching with my wife yeah, are beyond measure, are beyond measure. That's why some people are now even jealous, even business people saying a pastor building such things building a church like this, building a house with a helipad. So they think I'm stealing church money. But my elder is here. He knows who pays the workers at the church, elder, most of the workers on a Sunday, on month end. It's, it's us with my wife. And we do so many things. In fact, my church is eating my money. They are not, I'm not eating their money. They are actually consuming our money. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are sacrificers. We give. So if you want to break plateaus in your business, you must do something that you have never done. As a woman, you must do something that you have never done. Bring, don't be afraid when the Holy Spirit speaks to you that we are for the project of building the house of God. Go with your car. Go and give your car. As long as it's fully paid because we don't want trouble with you. As long as it's fully paid. And when God speaks, do it without thinking twice. I know it works, brethren. And you prosper with these spiritual principles that I'm teaching here. Can you lift your hands and say hallelujah? hallelujah. Today you look sad, huh? Do you still love me? <laughs> All right. Now then there is a law that I, I usually teach uh, called, can you write, the key of giving a thousand the key of giving a thousand, a thousand, which is called the money magnet key of prosperity. Now, these keys, I have tried and tested them, and they work. First Kings chapter 3, verse 4 to 5. Let's all open First Kings. Please open. I want you to see something in your Bible. If you have a Bible, I prefer that you open on your own so that you see what I am teaching. Now, verse 4, it says, Now the king, 
All right, let's start verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in statutes of his father David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offering on the altar at Gibeon. And the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. God said, ask, what shall I give you? Now, I want to teach something here. Solomon was not born uh, very rich. Solomon understood biblical principles. So he, there is a version we said he had a, an art of oftenly giving a thousand bent offerings. Now, I want you to understand something, people of God, that the backbone of poverty is broken at a thousand. When you have not learned the art of giving a thousand, let's all shout a thousand, you will not be able to break the backbone of poverty. Now, now Solomon, everybody listen, look up here. When he became rich, there is no man of God who laid hands on him. There is no prophet who prophesied to him that you are going to be rich. Solomon got to be rich through a dream. There are so many people who dream counting money, but they never see the money in reality. How many people here you have dreamt counting money? Can you lift your hand? You dreamt maybe banking money. Look, lift your hands up. I look at, but my question is, did you see that money? Do you have it? Solomon had a dream. Did you notice just a dream? And when he woke up, he was rich. Do you know what happened? When he, it was because he went on the high place and sacrificed a thousand. And it was not his first time. It was his custom of doing that. So even when I give, I give at a thousand, and the thousand bent offering that we are talking about here is not a thousand runs. Listen, we are talking at a highest, high level. He went on a high place. So what you do is you check the highest currency, which is topping the market. Let's say the, I usually use the U.S. dollar. So that's a high place, not rand. 1,000 rand is not a high place. You go at a 1,000 US dollar. And when you release that money and you give it in the spirit, you get what is called an open check system from heaven. God will come and ask, what do you want me to do for you? Because a 1,000 attracts God to come down, to give you an open check system. Now, now, let me show you something. Everybody, I want you to see this. Let's go to Solomon 8, Song of, so Song of, uh, Song of Songs 8. Let's open Song of Solomon, chapter 8. If, it's there, if your Bible is there, I want you to open verse 11. I want everyone to see this verse, Song of Solomon, chapter 8. I'm in the wrong, all right, chapter 8, verse 11. I wanted you to put it on the screen if it's possible. It says, Solomon had a vineyard at Baal Harmony. He leased the vineyard to keep us. Song of Solomon 8, verse 11. Everyone was to bring for its fruit a thousand silver coins. So Solomon had a vineyard, I am taking in Baal Harmony, which he leased to the keepers. So if you wanted to get, if you wanted to get fruit, everyone was to bring for its fruit a thousand silver coins. Now, this garden is still there in Israel. This year we are going to Israel. I'm taking our church. We booked at Bar Harmony because I wanted them to see this revelation live in Israel. And they believe that even today, 
if the, some billionaires, they go there to that garden to just eat and partake of the fruit. And they believe you prosper by eating that fruit. So during Solomon's time, he put keepers around the garden because he realized anybody who was partaking of that fruit after paying a thousand was getting blessed. So it became even a custom because it was, it was his lifestyle of giving a thousand. So he said, everybody who is to partake of this fruit, if you want to prosper, you give a thousand silver coins. Then you get the fruit. So the Holy Spirit was saying, what Solomon was doing, it's a spiritual revelation. In the spiritual realm, there is a vineyard that is there of prosperity with fruit. And that fruit, for you to eat it, you need to learn the art of eating the backbone of poverty with a thousand. So when you give a thousand, you, the keepers, demonic spirits, the taskmasters, demons that guards these spiritual realms of blessings, they are removed. You are given divine permission. You are given access to go and partake of certain wealthy or dimensions of riches which other Christians don't have. You begin to move in certain levels, in certain realms that are so powerful. So this revelation of a thousand, I have taught it uh, to many pastors, some who were poor, and they've given a thousand. And now, as I'm speaking, some of them own houses. They, they are now prospering. So even with my wife, whenever we give, we give it a thousand US dollar. So a thousand US dollar, it's about 18,000 runs. So that is the level which I'm talking about, where when you are giving, you give it 18,000, 20,000 runs. When you give it that level, you break the backbone of poverty. So a, a thousand silver coins was worth the equivalent to the highest currency of that time. So you offer on a high place, and then you prosper. Can you put also Genesis 20, verse 16? Genesis 20. First Samuel chapter 16. Verse 1, it says, Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have provided myself a king amongst his son. Can you give me a bottle of water? Give me a bottle of water. All right. Now, when, when you read in the Bible, how many people have seen in the Bible a whole chapter which is written, so and so, son of so and so. So and so, son of so and so. And sometimes you skip those chapters, you know, especially when you see them in Chronicles. Now, my question is, do you think God was wasting pages? They must be a revelation. Now, there is a law, everybody say there is a law, is a law. called spiritual address. Let's all shout spiritual address. spiritual address. Now, when you want to post a blessing or a gift to someone, you get what is called a postal address or the physical address of that person. Then you post, if you don't get the address it will get lost. Your gift will get lost. Now, the Bible is saying, can I have one man? One man, can you come? Uh, elder, just come and stand on the pulpit there. Just far by the pulpit somewhere there. Yeah, stand there. Let's say he is David. Now, the prophet is being sent by God. And God said, I want you, Samuel, to go and anoint a king for Israel. And the king, he was not given the name. It was David. David was in the bush. But check what God said. God said, fill your horn with oil. 
I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. God wants to make someone to have palatial lifestyle in this church. But without understanding this key, you will not live a palatial lifestyle. So when God wants to bless you, he doesn't send the blessing to David that is in the bush there. He locates your spiritual address, which is your spiritual father. Who is your father? Can you point, who is your father in this church? The members of this church, some are pointing that direction. <laughs> Can I, and am I saying, well, this is your father. Now listen very well. So don't waste your time. Don't waste your time, people of God. God will not come to you, to your house where you are. If God wants to give you a marriage, heaven comes here. Amen. The one is brought here to your father. If you want to prosper, you must be connected to a covering. Amen. So God comes here where your father, where Jesse is. He will mention the name in the spiritual realm around your father. Then what God does is that he will not also send the prophet or, or anyone uh, he will not go, he will not send Samuel to the, to the bush where, where Samuel is, where, where, where David is. He will wait. The prophet was told, wait here. He tried the first one. He tried the second one. He almost anointed the wrong one. All of them, because they were not science, oil was not coming out. Abinadab came. He tried to pour. Oil was not coming out. Elisha came. Oil was not coming out. And all of them, Shama came. And so the Shama means God is there. I think he thought now, ah, this is the man. Because he has a powerful name, God is present. But when he was trying to pour the oil, it didn't come out. Up to the seventh one. And then God said, no, there is another one. And he asked the parents, and they said, there is one in the bush. And he said, can you come, sir, come, sir. Yeah, come, one of you. Yeah, you can just come, any one of you. He said, send one of the servants. Now, if God wants to bless you, you are the one who must come to the father. The father does not come to you. Can you go and get David? Say, go and get him. Yeah, you, you, you have to come here to your spiritual address. That's why. So we, we will wait until he comes. God waits until you bath, you come to church, and you come to your father. That's when oil is released. It is released around your spiritual address. So if you want to be blessed, you must never fight this man. Because he's the conduit pipe, he's the stem which God uses to channel your blessing. So when you see anybody gossiping your pastor, that person is shooting himself in the feet. If you gossip your pastor, criticize, attack, what you are doing is you are attacking your blessing. You are attacking your spiritual address. You are attacking your place of anointing, your place of covering. Somebody shout, teach me doctor. Say, doctor, teach me. Thank you. God bless you. You may be seated. So, so respect your spiritual address. Some of you, you came here, you had nothing. But now you are somebody because of the address. Amen. Some are now driving cars. Do you know that marriages are released when we honor our spiritual address? When we honor our spiritual fathers. But the problem with many people, they are spiritual street kids. Can you look at the person next to you? Say, do they look like sons or they are spiritual street kids? Check at their face. Do you know there are some street kids in, this, in, in, in Jobbeck here, but there are also spiritual street kids in the church who don't honor their fathers. People who don't honor their address. So God wants to touch you. He wants to bless you today. When God is about to bless you with a wedding, 
He makes sure the guy shows up here in this ministry. The blessing shows up through your parents here. If he wants to give you a house, it comes through your parents. So that's why if you come into my house trying to gossip my spiritual father, I will show you the exit. I will not allow you to sit. Why? Because I know you are now urinating in my well. I don't know if you, get, if you get me. Because we come here to drink from this couple. This is the well that God uses to, to give us water. So when we are here, we are by a well uh, which is around Apostle Humphrey. And we are fetching water. So when you come gossiping this, this man, you are now wooing inside my well and I want to drink clean water I don't want to drink contaminated water because what you are doing it will make me to see him in another picture because you cause my life to have a dark glass my vision will be blurred I will not be able to see him well that's why some of you you have got bitterness that you don't understand where you get it from you got it from about even your a pastor. Yet that pastor never did anything wrong to you. Do you know the reason? Because you entertained people that were stoning your pastor. And they gave you what is called uh, imparted bitterness. Do you know that imparted bitterness is stronger than the bitterness that you get direct? Don't be an enemy of someone because your friend is an enemy of that person. So, once you gossip your father, you are shooting your own feet, you are destroying your, your life, and you will not prosper at all. So, when you are in church, you need to be wise. If you want to increase, you must connect with the people that are doing the correct thing. Do you know that, now listen, do you know that Paul was not born a murderer? Paul, who was called Saul of, of Tarsus. Do you know the reason how or the way he got demons of murdering people or Christians? It was in Acts chapter 7. When Stephen was being stoned, men who were stoning Stephen removed their clothes and they gathered them around his, his feet. That's when the demons of murder entered him. So don't allow men who are stoning your spiritual father to gather their clothes around your feet. That spirit will enter you and you become the worst one. You will start to fight your pastor more than them. Do you know why Peter denied Jesus three times? It's because he went and warmed himself around a fire of people who were criticizing Jesus. If he had not gone there, he was not going to deny. So they were saying he must be crucified, and he was there warming his hands and his hearing. The, ah, he must die. Another girl would say, I ah, know today he's dying. And then they said, you, we look, we know your face. Are you not one of his disciples? They said, no, I'm not. So when you are warming yourself around a group in the church, which is warming themselves with a wrong fire, with a fire of attacking the men of God, you end up denying Jesus. You end up doing things that you are not supposed to do in life. I want you to lift your hand and say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, repent I repent from attacking people that never did anything wrong to me. In the name of Jesus, lift your hand and say, I receive deliverance today. From the, from the demons that tries to make me, to, make me to, run to run away from my parents, from my spiritual address. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say from today, from today, I am going to prosper. I am going to multiply, am going to multiply. In, the in the spirit. 
in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. All right. Now I want to pray for business people. Uh, that is the group that I'm going to start with. And um, I want to just break some limits from business people that are here. So what I was teaching today, these are the laws that makes you to increase in life. Because I'm just teaching you according to your theme that you need to understand the law of sacrifice. You need to understand the law of giving 80,000. And you must also run away from the spirit that makes a lot of people to sin against their own bodies. And also the other thing that is very, very crucial. There are two things. If you are in business, people of God, listen. How many people are in business here? Lift your hand. Anybody in business in this church, can you lift your hand? Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Don't be, I know it. Stand up on your feet. Say, thank you, Jesus. Lift both hands. Say, my business is going to be blessed from today in Jesus' name. Shout amen. amen. All right, you may be seated. Now, all the business people that are in this church, it was my wish that all of you get this book, The Prophetic Business Principles. I don't make money through, through books. That's not how I... It's just a, a passion because even the money that we use to print these books, I just use it. The money which we, use to, which we get from sales, I just use it to increase volumes. There are some people who tried to do books. I told them there is no money there unless if you start a bookshop. So it's, to me, it's not a business because I am a doctor of theology and anthropology. So I, I just love to put information and revelation in writing. So even if you get all the books, the B.A. Farmer, not a hunter, mastering money, the, and the blessing of the Lord, which I call, and the blessing connector, which is the package of business, because you need to study, because I'm also a man of God who is in business as well. So I understand the principles of business. I coach business people. So what I just want to say before I, I pray for people or step down, because I'm going back tomorrow to Zimbabwe, but I cannot go back without teaching you what I want to teach you now, which is my last, uh, last point. You know, in China, there is what they call last, 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 last prize. This one I, is the last. So this, I just want to teach you one thing as business people. If your business, listen, has no kingdom purpose, I call that business a useless business. Your business must be connected to the vision. If it's not connected to the vision, you are going nowhere in life. That's why, now, you, as a business person, or the business fraternity in this church, I want you to form even a quorum where you come and you talk to your spiritual father, if you want your businesses to rise, that what are the plans that are in your heart for the next 24 months concerning this church? Because he might be having stuff which is inside of him. Things that he is dreaming about what they want to do here. But sometimes pastors or apostles... They don't know how to approach their children to ask them that we now want to embark on such a project. So even when I came here from Zimbabwe, the first thing as a man of God was to pray and say, Lord, show me what is in the heart of Apostle Humphrey. And when I was praying, I noticed that his heartbeat is beating church building, church building, church building, church building. This man is not sleeping with the wife, praying for you to remove this thing and put a better thing. He is not happy for us to be in a church where he sees a preacher sweating because it's very hot. Hello? 
He is not happy to see people worshipping in a place where when it's cold, it becomes very cold. More than the temperature outside. So when we know the vision that is in our father's heart, then we begin to tap into the blessings that are in the spiritual realm. Now, all of you business people, if you want to move from the realm of operating with bottles, bottle level of money, because most business people are operating with bottles. When Haga got a baby, uh, in fact, it was uh, yeah, a baby, Ishmael, the baby started mocking and Sarah said, I no longer want your son here. Uh, please, Abraham, check out this woman. Abraham gave Hagar a bottle of water, just a bottle. And he said, take it and go. Men, I always tell people, men give in bottles. They give in bottles. So when Hagar left, she went into the wilderness. And she arrived at a certain point. At, Brother, can you come? You, can you come? Run to the front quickly. Run to the front. I'm just trying to help some business people st sit there. Just sit there. The Bible says the son, Ishmael, was about to die. Because they had, no, they had ran out of water. And the Bible says... The woman put the baby a bow shot away from herself. And she came here and she started crying. And also the baby was crying. But when, when the boy, in fact, the Bible uses the word which I, I just want you to put on the screen. Genesis chapter 21. I just want you to put that verse then. I want to pray because this is very crucial revelation for business people, which make now in verse in verse 17 of Genesis 21, the Bible says, the Lord God heard the voice of the Lord who was crying. It was Hagar that was crying. But the Bible is saying God heard the voice of the Lord. Now, in Hebrew, a Lord means a vision. Because in Ishmael, that's where we get the Arabic nations. Qatar, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, all these, Iran, Iraq, they are Ishmaelites. They came from Ishmael. So if Ishmael had died... God was, we were not going to have Qatar or all these Arabs. So Ishmael was a lad, not a boy. A lad is someone carrying a vision. He's full of nations. So this church, it's a lad, it's loaded. It's a vision full of nations. There are so many people who are supposed to be saved because of the lad called Ignite House Ministries International. God doesn't want this vision to die. The vision of Ignite House Ministries International must prosper. So the Bible says God heard the voice of the Lord. And the angel call of God called to Hagar from out of heaven and said to her, What are you crying for? What else you, Hagar? Fear not, God has heard the voice of the vision where it is. Now, whenever you cry for the vision, the vision begins to cry for you. So if you want your prayers to be answered very fast, you must pray more. Intercessors, listen. Pray more for the vision. When you pray more for the vision, when the vision prays for you, God hears your prayers very fast. And now, listen now what God did. Go to verse, next verse. Go down. Go down. He's, and she was told, Arise, Hagar. All of you, can you stand up? Everyone stand up. Arise. Arise. Can you sit down? Sit down. Sit down. Stand up again. Stand up. Everybody stand up. Uh, isn't it your father said we are awakening? We are arising. What is to arise? 
To arise is to make a decision. You are standing. Standing is a position of readiness to fight. You are ready to know that we are going to arise as a church. And we want to fight for this vision. We may be seated. Then he was told, arise. So you need to arise. Number two, you must go to the vision and you lift it up. You lift it up. That is supporting the vision. So lift up the lad. So number two, you arise, you make a decision. Number three, you lift up the vision. That is giving your money, you are supporting the vision, you are giving your sacrifices. Then number three, hold him with your hand. You must embrace the vision. What is embracing the vision? It's loving your church. You must speak good about your ministry out there. Let's clap hands for speaking good for our church. So you arise, you lift up the vision, you hold the vision with your hand. For I will make him a great nation. It's a vision carrying nations. So when you want to be moved from bottles to wells, this is what you do. When you do this, now go to the next verse, verse 19. Then, let's all shout, then. then. Shout aloud, then. then. What happened? God opened her eyes. And she saw what? A well of water. And she went, filled the skin with water, gave also the vision. Now, when, when you want a well, Wells are businesses that are generational. A business, because wells, they feed communities. They feed your children's children's children. So I was telling some business people that I, I want a ministry or I want a business that will benefit my children's children to the third and fourth generation. But the secret is connecting your business vision to a higher vision because the church vision is superior it's spiritual it's higher than your business no matter how much money you are touching even if you are touching billions you are below the spiritual realm you are still under the covering so you must connect to the vision god wants a reason to give you water he wants a reason to give you a well. If you don't provide a reason, he will not open your eyes so that you see a well. So when she cried for the vision, when she lifted the vision, when she embraced the vision, when she arose towards the vision, then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. That was a prophetic revelation. Now business people listen. Where you are seated, do you know, say, is, are you pastor? Or oh, you are a pastor. Do you know, pastor, where your house is, where you are seated there, or where you are staying, do you know there might be a gold mine underneath, which you don't know? And do you know, around the area where you stay, there might be an idea that God can give you to become a billionaire in two weeks. But do you know the reason? It's because our eyes are not opened. Our eyes have scales. Our eyes are blind. So when you do these three things to your vision, God removes the scales from your eyes. The reason why Paul was persecuting the church is because he had scales. When Ananias came and prayed for him in Acts 9, the Bible says scales fell from his eyes and he started seeing. That's why he wrote all the books in the Bible. That you are, so many of you, you have scales. It's not that there is no money. There is too much money in South Africa. You can be a trillionaire here. You, your problem is you are blind. That is your problem. So we don't know how to trigger the hand of God to remove scales from our eyes. We don't have the keys. The key is vision. The key is standing and being committed to the work. Serving in the house, loving your church, standing with the men and women of God, and doing everything. That, then God, then all of us, we did English. I think we know the word then. It means you cannot have what follows before you do what is before the word then. So there are things that you have to do to arise, to lift the vision up, 
and to embrace it, to hold it, to love it passionately, and then God opens your eyes and you see a well of water and you move from bottle type of business. Because some of you, your businesses cannot even feed your, your, your siblings. It cannot feed your family because it's a bottle level. So if you want the well level, you must connect to the vision. So if your vision of the business that you are doing is not connected, I'm telling you there is no reason why God can bless that business for you to see wells. Some of you, you are business people, you don't even tithe, you don't support, you, you chew the tithe, you are a robber. You rob God and you chew tithe. And you don't give your tithe to the house of God and you expect to be blessed. So we want to pray today. Some of us, we have to repent today so that God may start to bless us. Can we clap our hands unto the Lord? You may be seated. You may be seated. So I want to pray for all business people who are saying, Prophet, I am tired of living in bottle levels. Because when you are talking of bottles, it's touching 200,000 runs, 500,000 one million or so, those are bottle levels, two million rands which you are counting or so. God wants you to touch per month one billion rands, two billion rands, three billion. He has that power. But the problem is that he is noticing. He checks your vision of your business and he checks the vision of the house and he sees there is no connection. So there must be a connection, a link once there is a link, he will give you a well because he knows when he gives Hagar a well, Hagar will fetch water with a bottle and come and give the lad a drink. So you come, you fetch. So God will give you a well that pastor cannot finish because any project you'll be just getting from the well, you come, you supply water. So there was a reason because God wanted him to feed Wanted her to feed the vision. So he had to give her a lot of water. So they ended up dwelling there. The Bible says they camped there. It became uh, the place where Ishmaelites uh, grew. The Ishmaelites uh, made that place their residence because they could not move. So Hagar decided to dwell by the well. So she would fetch water from the well and give to the vision. So with my wife... We, we made a prayer, and we said, for fig ministries, our church, of our father, the archbishop, to prosper, me and my wife, we are giving ourselves to support that vision. Give us a well. And we fasted for 40 days with my wife, challenging God that we want money. Why we want a well? Because we want to support the vision. When you give us money, if our father says, we want this, we run. I want 100,000, we run. I want this, we run. And God is prospering me. Hallelujah. In a mighty way. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, I am blessed. Even you can see the suit which I'm wearing. <laughs> this is a cloth that can cut your skin. It's very sharp. Hallelujah. I'm not bragging. This suit... It's worth a lot of money. You are, this, you are talking of more than 50,000 rands or 60,000 rands. This is a D&G. You are seeing. <laughs> Mashudu. I want you to see. Mashudu. <laughs> D&G. You can't wear this suit if you don't support the vision. Even if you hate me, I'm going tomorrow. I will tell you the honest truth. Hallelujah. So I, I don't wear cheap things. Why? Because I support the vision. My suits, it's 100,000 runs, some of them, 100,000 pa. What I wear just for the sand. Some 70,000 runs. I'm trying to convert the monies because some of them are 5,000. They were Googling my sons. Some of the suits, if you Google, you will see even this brand, it was modeled by a model. I don't buy things that have not been modeled. When they model like this, I, chew, I phone them that DNG, I want that one. And they charge me money and it's shipped to Zimbabwe. 
when, when Gucci models a suit, I say, I want that one. And I wait. Why? Because I'm not a grasshopper. I support the work of God. I'm not a chicken. I am an eagle. And I'm coming here. I have been sent to raise some eagles in this church. Some people must refuse to be grasshoppers. God wants people to be prosperous. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There, I'm speaking this with all, humility, with all humility. That's who I am. Hallelujah. That's who I am. I, I can't say anything less than that because that is who I am. I don't know. You know, God must bless you with suits to an extent when you get even in your wardrobe. You pray and say, Lord, which one today? And you go, my mother told me to choose this one. But I want to choose this one. So, and when I am saying I have 500 suits, it will be suits that I haven't worn. Because right now, my suits, some of them, it's 2024 models. 2020 something model. Yeah, that's what I wear. The ones for 2022, I blessed the pastors who don't support the vision. I gave them to wear. Hallelujah. Me, I wear latest. Why? Because I do latest things. So if you don't like me, you must learn to like me. If you want to prosper, play with people like us. Be around men like me. You will prosper. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, your mind will be sharpened. Hallelujah. Shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Yeah. Even my, the, the shoes that I wear, if you look at them, I wear Gucci. Hmm? So I wear shoes that speaks in tongues. Shokobola bakalakala. Shamale ndakata. And my suit interprets and say, he's saying he is not a grasshopper. The suit will be interpreting the tongues the shoe is saying. And I'm coming from Zimbabwe where they are saying it's a dead economy. That's why I don't shop I don't shop with children in the church. Because if I shop when you are around, you will drop. You end up having bitterness. You end up having jealousy. Because I lost some signs when I went for shopping with them. Because when I go into UK, I'll be getting into... So one of them said, hey, this is how you shop. So I saw she's dying. So now with my wife, when we go, we shop alone. Because we don't want people to see. Because when you see me shopping now, I say, he's still buying. He's still buying. Ah, he's not yet finished. No, when you see me, when you are now getting angry, I will be starting. So I don't want that. So that's why even my sons here, when I shop, I don't want to travel. I don't want to move with them. They will be injured. <laughs> I'm telling you, by the time we go home, one of our they will be bleeding inside, saying, what type of a man is this man who keeps on shopping and shopping and shopping and shopping and shopping with his wife, and they don't drop? So I like it, especially when you look like you are now angry. I go deeper. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you look like you no longer like me, I go deeper. I, I'm supposed to, I'm free. I don't apologize. I don't apologize at all. I'm not an, a grasshopper. I don't live a life of, excuse me, excuse me. Me, I wear what I want to wear. If you vomit, vomit outside. It's deliverance. It's your own deliverance. I, I have no problem with that. So if you get jealous, it's not my fault. So I'm not trying to brag, but I'm trying to tell you where I, I, I am saying a man who had one trousers a blue, sky blue trousers that was known by everyone. One, in Shona, we call it Womandi Kupeke. Do you know what it means? It says you dry it, you wait for it to dry, so uh, to dry outside, then you wear it and you go out. So I had a Womandi Kupeke type of a trousers. But today, God is blessing us. We have driven all sorts of cars and everything. But the secret, many people come. 
and ask me, what is your secret? What is your secret? You are just a pastor. What is your secret? It is what I'm teaching you. Rather than getting angry and saying, this preacher from Zimbabwe is bragging, better join me. If you can't beat me, join me. Hallelujah. If you can't beat, you know, that's the problem with Africa. Africans, they get angry instead of learning. They get angry. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah, no. Yet they are supposed to be delivered. So when I lay hands on you, I am a blessed man. Even if your hair is kinky, when I lay hands on you, it will be curled in the name of Jesus. Because my hands have gold. They are blessed. I am telling you the truth. I want to lay hands on some business people. So, some of you, you are in business and I am a pastor. But your business is still, because I don't have much time, I was telling my business people to do business. If I had the time, I would be a billionaire by now. But because of ministry. But yet, even though I am in ministry, I beat them, even in giving. The figures that I give, the things that I'm doing are so high. So I want to pray for you, whether you are in business, because that is the anointing that I carry. And I want to bless some people. If you are in business and you are saying, Prophet, I now want to link my business to the vision. I want to move from bottles to wells. I want a vision, a business that will sustain my children's children long after I'm gone. Can you stand on your feet? Stand on your feet. I want to pray for you. If you are serious, you are saying you now want to support the work of God in your tithes. You want to tithe faithfully. You want to support. I don't just want you to stand. Can you come to the front? Come to the front. Let's clap hands for those who are coming. Come to the front. You now want to be serious with your tithe. You want to be serious with everything that you want to do for God. Come to the front here and God will bless you in a serious way. In Jesus' mighty name. Rakashabadara. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry. I, I don't in my church. I saw I, 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 Apostle Humphrey told me that prophet be free. This is your home. So I was welcomed by your father. Hallelujah. Yeah. So please, I am allowed to go beyond time. Uh, you will keep time next Sunday. <laughs> After I'm gone. Hallelujah. Me, I'm, I'm here to work. I'm here to labor. Hallelujah. So I want to pray for all of you business people. I want you to lift your hands, all of you. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. from today, we pray in the name of Jesus that we are now going to tithe into your house. Say, I arise to lift up the vision and to embrace it in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh Lord, that you bless me with commitment in the name of Jesus. Say, thank you, Father, for your blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, from today, I receive deliverance from iniquities, from limitations that were limiting, that were limiting my life. In the name of Jesus, all business limits be broken. In the name of Jesus, be broken. In Jesus' name. Say, in Jesus' name. Say, I receive the anointing of God, the glory of God, the grace of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your power come down right now upon my life. In Jesus' name, to do business in deep waters. In Jesus' name. Can you clap your hands unto God? Hallelujah. So I had so many things which I wanted to tell you, but I just looked at time. Because uh, maybe you can get my books, but the area of tithing, tithing.
tithing, tithing, it keeps your business open, your mind open. Your, the, the windows of heaven on your body are opened. And I said yesterday, it makes, uh, it goes into your loins and it blesses Levi, a child in the fourth generation. So when you are tithing, you are not blessing yourself only, but your children's children. The Bible says, Hebrews 7, 8, Levi paid tithes when he was in the loins of Abraham. Levi, in the fourth generation, was paying tithe in the loins as Abraham was paying. So it brings a well, a blessing, a general. Now, which means tithe is anointing of a well. It feeds Isaac. It, your, your, your first generation son, it feeds Jacob, and it feeds Levi. So you, your business will have power to feed the third and fourth generation when you tithe. Everything God does evolves and revolves around a tithe. But we'll talk about it sometime if God gives me that grace and opportunity so that we move from Genesis to Revelation. I show you scriptures from Genesis, was uh, Genesis chapter 2, 3, 4, 5, you see tithe in a, in, a, in a revelatory form, because it's there, but people don't see it, how God was using the children of Israel. So I want you from today to be a tithe-aholic. They are alcoholics, isn't it? And there are some people that I call tithe-aholics. Can you shake someone and say, be a tithe-aholic? Say, be addicted to tithing. <laughs> when you are now addicted to tithing, I'm telling you, when we come here, I will see business people who are now owning wells. We are tired of these bottles, these struggles, water that runs dry after a month and so forth. I want you to operate with, in wells. So I'm just going to just put one touch to impart the grace even of prosperity and tithing upon your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we shout amen? amen? Can we shout amen? amen? From today, I'm releasing an anointing. We don't want any business person who wear shoes made of rexin here. It must be genuine leather from now because that is the standard of God. Amen. Don't wear Jing Zhong Fong Kong. Hallelujah. Like Adam who, who clothed himself with leaves from Kong that gets dry. God said, no, that's a lower level. God killed an animal. And God was the first man to give us leather. And he gave him an animal skin. And he said, wear this one. God was saying, you don't live in the Fong Kong Jing Zhong lived. You are not a grasshopper. Don't go for leaves like Adam. Go for the grapes, go for the leather. Uh, can, you, can you shout, I am not a grasshopper? Shout, I eat grapes, I eat grapes. not leaves, wow. not Fong Kong, wow. not Xing Zhong. Wow. In Jesus' name, can you clap hands for yourself? So we want to pray for you in Jesus' name. Next time when I come back after maybe a year or whatever or a time I come back, yeah, I will give you 12 months. I, I, will, I will randomly want to visit some of you. I want to see you walk in the closet. If I don't see a Gucci shoe, I will fire you from this church. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will be fired in Jesus' name. I must see a D&G or something. Because you, you must enjoy heaven whilst you are on earth. You don't, there are no Gucci shoes in heaven. You enjoy them here. There are no supermarkets in heaven. There are no uh, Ferraris and Lamborghinis in heaven. It's for Christians, not for these heathens who go to be owls with such stuff. Can you clap your hands for yourselves? We want to see the sons of Apostle Humphrey parking Lamborghinis, Ferraris out there. They are not for, those things are not for drunkards. They are for the children of God. All the blessed good things are for us. So I want to pray for you. And from today, every member of this church must refuse to be a grasshopper. Can you shout everyone at the back? Say, I'm not a grasshopper. Say, I eat grapes in Jesus' name. 
So let me pray for you. Just begin to pray. Continue praying. I'm just touching. And uh, if you are not tithing, you are going to start tithing because I have never missed a tithe since I got married. I am now 21 years in marriage, not missed one dollar. So I want you to get the impartation of tithing as well. Can you lift your hands? Father, I'm praying in the name of Jesus for all the business people. Receive wells. Move from bottles to wells. Move from bottles to wells. I, when I lay hands on you, go and kneel down where you were seated. Okay, you go and kneel down, everybody, and you pray for three minutes, thanking God. Receive anointing to move from bottles to wells. From bottles to wells. From bottles to wells. Receive. I rebuke limits. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Lucy, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Out. Limits. Lord, let them learn to sacrifice bulls and to give it a thousand. Let them move from bottles to wells. Move from bottle 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 to wells. I break limits. Come out limits. Come out. Come out every business limitation. It's broken from today. In the name of Jesus. Move from bottle to wells. In the name of Jesus. Move from bottles to wells. Big manis. In the name of Jesus. Big figures. Big figures. In the mighty name of Jesus. Move from bottle to wells. Move from bottle to wells. Move from bottle to wells. Let them tithe, oh God. From today, those who are not tithing. Let them tithe in the name of Jesus. Move from bottle to wells. Rakasha. Move from bottles to wells. Move, go and pray right now for three minutes kneeling. Everybody, move from bottles to wells. I release. I release. I release that anointing. Touch. Touch them, O Lord. Move from bottles to wells. In Jesus' name. Yes, receive. Move from bottles to wells in Jesus' name. Move from bottles to wells. Move from bottles to wells in Jesus' name. Move right now. Move to from bottles to wells. I transfer them. We shift them in the name of Jesus. We shift them. Rakatoborabada. Move from bottles to wells. Move right now. Move. Rahusha Kahuta. Move right now. Move right now. Move from bottles to wells. In the name of Jesus. Mahuka Uta Rubada. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, move from bottles, move from bottles to wells, move from bottles to wells, go and pray, kneel down, move from bottles to wells, move from bottles, Lord we release a tithing anointing upon your people, move right now. From bottles to wells, move from bottles to wells, move from bottles to wells, move in the name of Jesus. Let them increase, increase a search of increase, 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 increase. God gives in wells, man gives in bottles. I release wells, well, well, waters, money that cannot be finished. Money that cannot be finished. Money that cannot be finished. Move from bottles to wells. 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 In Jesus name. Let's all say men give in bottles. Can you shout, men gives in bottles, but God gives in wells. Now I want to, today I'm collecting offering, hallelujah. So we want to collect offering. Can we uh, all uh, get our, so what we are going to do, um, um, I want some people first who are saying, uh, men of God, prophet, I want even after you are gone to give a thousand uh, so that you pray for me. I know maybe you might not have it. You want to give uh, 18,000 or 
20,000 rands so that uh, to the ministry, to the work of God, uh, maybe towards the building or whatever they will use it for. Because what I'm just sensing is I want to pronounce uh, an anointing to break the backbone of poverty. Even though you are in a business and you are touching some monies, you might not know that your level, that you think it's a good level, it's a limited level. So if you are there, I'm feeling there are some people who are saying, prophet, before you go, can you declare the backbone of poverty destroyed from my life? I would want to come maybe this week or whatever, uh, or this before this month end with 18,000 rands equivalent to 1,000 US dollars. Or today, if you want to swipe it to the ministry, you want me to, pr to pray for you. But the next realm I want to pray for is for those who want to start tithing, who are not tithing. Then we collect offering like that. So if you are there, you are just feeling. You, hear, you want to do it now because I'm sensing an anointing. I have done that with many people in Kenya, America, and they give testimonies that are so powerful. I did it in Kenya. Some now own minds. Some are phoning me prophet. They were phoning my elders. When prophet came, he taught us to give a thousand. We gave. Uh, in Kenya, many people gave uh, into their ministry. And what happened, some got farms. Some are now producing stuff which is being exported all over the world. So there is a limitation that is broken in whatever business you are doing. When you do it in front of a prophet or with a prophet, with a prophetic action, the Bible says believe in his prophets, not false prophets. Believe in his prophets and you will prosper. Which means a true prophet carries anointing to make people to prosper. So I don't live by taking money from people. I live by blessing people, teaching them how to make money. So when you come to my church, you will never see me selling anointing oil, but I'm blessed. You will never see me selling water or something like that because I don't operate like that. But I know the principles of the word. So if you are there, you are saying, I would want to do it, but I might not have the money now but I'm coming that I'm going to bring it. I am faithful prophet, just come, or even if you have it. Those who want me to pray for them, come and kneel down here. Those who want to give a thousand, just come, maybe at any time. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Just come to the front, come to the front. Let's clap hands for those that are coming. You want to break? The backbone of poverty, 8,000, 8,000, or even more, whatever God is ministering to you, just come to the front. You are tired of bottles, come and kneel. Let's clap hands for those that are coming. You want to sacrifice 1,000 US dollars, so you check uh, the exchange rate when you are bringing and you bring at the exchange rate of rand to US dollar. And so I want to pray for you because whenever you kneel, it's a sign of receiving a blessing. Hallelujah. You don't receive a blessing whilst you are standing. When you are delivered, when you are being delivered, you stand. But when you are being blessed, you kneel. It's a sign of receiving the blessing. Now lift your hands. I want you to begin to pray and say, Lord, I thank you before I come and lay hands on you that the backbone of poverty is being broken. Father, I break the backbone of poverty from his life as he give a thousand. I break the backbone of poverty in the name of Jesus. Remain there praying, remain kneeling. I break the backbone of poverty from your life. I break the backbone of poverty from your life. I break the backbone of poverty from your life. We break the backbone of poverty from your life. We break the backbone of poverty from your life. I break the backbone of poverty from your life. I break the backbone of poverty from your life. We break 
the backbone of poverty from your life. We break the backbone of poverty from your life in the name of Jesus. We break the backbone of poverty from your life. I break the backbone of poverty from your life. I break the backbone of poverty from your life. I break the backbone of poverty from your life in Jesus name it's being broken backbone of poverty be broken backbone of poverty be broken in the name of Jesus the backbone of poverty be broken from today the backbone of poverty be broken in the name of Jesus we break the backbone of poverty in the name of Jesus we break the backbone of poverty come out come out right now out of it we break the backbone of poverty in the name of Jesus. We break the backbone. Come out. Come out right now. I'm breaking the backbone of poverty. Come out in the name of Jesus. We break the backbone of poverty. Come out. We break the backbone of poverty in the name of Jesus. Come out right now. I break the backbone of poverty in Jesus' name. I break the backbone of poverty. Come out. Out. Out out right now i break it in the name of jesus we break it from your life in the name of jesus we break the backbone of poverty at a thousand silver coin let him have access to the fruit in bar harmony let them have access to this fruit that is guarded the fruit of prosperity which is guarded by keepers i pray for access I pray for divine permission in the name of Jesus divine permission from today we permit you to count money we permit you at higher levels in the spirit realm Osha kahuta malia mahusa karuba ruba ruba karuba katuba come out loose backbone of poverty go backbone of poverty go backbone of poverty go in the name of Jesus, backbone of poverty be broken in Jesus' name. All of you lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for your people, the business people that are here, your servants, your children that are here. Bless them, O oh Lord, and prosper them in a mighty way. I have prayed for them. May they multiply from today. Let them prosper in Jesus' name. May all the people shout a big amen. Can we clap our hands unto God? All right, all of you people that are here, please listen. If you have the money in your card, I know you are a cashless economy. You are not like us in Zimbabwe. We use cash. Uh, this swipe don't work. So go and swipe today. Uh, now listen, I'm not going to follow you. So this anointing has been released, but for it to function, you must just be faithful. Hallelujah, on your own. I, I, when I pray for business people, I don't take names like what is done in other churches. That take their names so that you phone them. I expect you to be faithful to your pledge because you are doing it to God. So this is not a pledge. This is obedience. Because pledges are when we say we are building, how many wants to give? And so this one is obedient to a principle that you want to test to see if it works. You are doing it by faith. So you will see what God will do. So bring the money. Don't just come for prayer. Make sure you fulfill on your own. No one must phone you. No one must follow you up. But others who want to sacrifice bigger than that, you are saying a thousand is small money. You are allowed to come even with something bigger than a thousand and you sacrifice hallelujah and god will still bless you and will break the backbone of poverty and some of you shall have dreams whilst god is making you to count money now whenever you have a dream counting money do you know what you do if you want it to happen you give a thousand that dream you translate it into the physical realm so some who dream counting money, but they haven't counted the money they dreamed counting in the physical realm. They haven't done that. It's because they didn't give a thousand. A thousand is the one that downloads that blessing into the physical realm. So any dream which you want to happen, you give an offering for that dream. 
But if it's of money, you sit a thousand. And then it will take place. God bless you. You may be seated. Uh, let's clap hands for them. Now we want, I want everyone, we're saying, I now want to tithe. I was, uh, you now want to be faithful in tithing. Can you stand where you are? Just stand. You now, let's all st stand those who are saying, I now want to be faithful. I don't mind you are an elder or what. If you feel you want to be faithful, can you stand on your feet? Let's clap hands for those that are standing. Just stand on your feet. Clap hands for those that are standing. You were not tithing before. You now want to tithe. Do we all tithe in this church? Hello? Can you shake someone next to say, are you a tither? <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are not, please stand. Lift your hands, stretch towards the pulpit, those who are standing. Let me pray. Father, I pray for all the people who want to start tithing. We are blessing them. I speak your prosperity, your blessing, and your anointing right now. Your glory and your presence over them. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for their lives. May everyone shout a big amen. amen. Can I have the offering baskets? present worship as you are singing all right now come and put them here on my feet here so i'm interceding today i i like your offering baskets because they are metal do you know why i will be checking those bringing coins so that i rebuke them and deliver them because i will hear kala kachka, and then i know you will step on the right side i would because we don't want coins here I want you to bring a faith offering today, something that you have never given to God. If you are swiping today, swipe a better offering because the anointing here is an anointing that will prosper you in a mighty way, in a mighty way. So let's have a song as we come and give. Today I'm monitoring how you are giving. Hallelujah. All my life you have been faithful. Let's stand on our feet. Let's stand on our feet. Let's, Let's come and give. With every breath that I am made for, I will sing all the goodness of God. The Bible says, don't come empty handed to the house of the Lord. Let's come and give. Let's come. Let's come. Let's come. Father, we are praying. Come and give right now. Jesus.
Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this offering. Let's lift our hands to God. We bless it in Jesus' mighty name. I speak your grace. I speak your anointing and your glory in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord. May we all shout a big amen. amen. We may be seated in the presence of God. Now, I have given, uh, I have written prophecies for all the people that uh, left their books for prophecies. So I am going tomorrow, if you still need uh, a prophecy, because I didn't have time to prophesy to you one-on-one, -on -one, you can just get a book so that I have somewhere where I can write. Uh, so I just want to, um, to just call just about three people. Uh, can I have uh, Takani Nemaranze something? If you are there, Takani something, can you come uh, to the front? Then Faith Bonoko, can you come also? Faith. Then uh, there is Sekalelo something. Hakelo, Hakelo, Sekalelo something. Uh, I hope I am pronouncing it well. So I just want them to come to the front. I just want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. And uh, Rifumelo, Rifumelo, can you come? I'm just sensing in the spirit. Uh, then Mpo, Mpo, come. I just want five, I think. All right. I want to pray for them in Jesus' mighty name. Can those people stand? Uh, what's your name? I'm Paul. All right. Can you lift your hands? I want to pray for you. Yeah. Read Psalms 1 to 37 and pray from September 2023. I see God quenching some trouble. It was like fire the devil was trying to set up against you. So I saw about uh, three people who we were planning uh, sort of like your downfall. So the Holy Spirit said, uh, tell her to pray and read uh, the scriptures. They say, I see uh, then instead of them destroying you, they are going to fall into their own pit. And you shall give uh, some testimonies which I have written in your book there in that period. But uh, the reason why I called you because I just want to lay hands and nullify that plan. In the name of Jesus, she will see it. Oh Lord, oh Father, she will see them falling into their own pit. In the name of Jesus, that group being jealous of her. Oh, Lord, whether in life or at work, I now break that power. I pray I break that trap. It's broken from today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, you are free in Jesus' mighty name. Can I speak to Ripumelo? All right. All right. Uh, God is giving you a new name in the spirit. When I was praying, I was hearing favor, favor. So the Lord was saying she will be now be called Ripumelo Favor. Shivuri. Because the Lord was saying, let her not look down upon herself. Because she will be, I want her to be full of favor. I want her to be full of riches. So I saw God's hand also now, this is why I'm calling this group of people. I saw God's hand uh, destroying or attacking the devil that was 
uh, crafting to launch something against you. Uh, so I think it was three or so people out of all. So I have put, I had put your books aside because I want that plan to be destroyed. So I saw the word grace and then the Lord said, uh, I'm giving a, a new name, favor, because there will be favor upon your life. So I saw even your family looking up to you as you mature in the Lord. They will depend on you financially and many don't look down upon yourself. So I pray for you right now. I speak that blessing. I speak that grace over your life in Jesus' mighty name. And I say it's done. Thank you, O oh Lord. We worship your name. Amen. Yes, it's done. You are free now. All right, what? All right, your name is Takan. How long have you been in this church? Since 2006. All right. Yeah, because when I was praying for you, there is something that I saw in you which I don't know. You know, God showed me that this woman called Takan, Nemaranza, uh, she is a serious gift of faith, a gift of faith. It's a gift. I don't know if you know. So uh, the Lord said, tell her to read my Bible. Uh, as Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by reading the word. So the Lord says, develop your faith, for it shall give you many blessings, favor, and breakthroughs in your life. And I was given scriptures that you must, uh, you must uh, read. But you have a unique gift of faith, which you need to explore because it is the one that will make you to uh, tap into some dimensions that will shock people in your life. So it is there already. God gave you. You don't struggle to believe. So I just want to pray for you now. Father, I pray for her. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, for this gift to grow, the gift of faith in her life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let it grow. Because it is the key to your prosperity. I thank you, Holy Lord. I worship your name in Jesus' name. May all the people say a big amen. amen. All right. What's your name? All right. Faith. Yeah, you, when I prayed for you, God said, this woman called Faith Bonok, I have given her a spirit of love. It's a spirit of love. So the Lord showed me you were at a certain time eating in, on a king's table. So I, I, I tried to, to, to ask God, what does that mean? And the Lord said, tell her that there is a time when she will get that privilege to eat with the kings. So I, the Lord said, I'm the one who will do it. So he will do it in his own way, not me. I'm just a prophet. And also, I then saw you as you were growing. Opportunities came, and I saw you flying in big plans, in big plans. And God said, tell her to learn also to sacrifice her resources, her money, and time to my, and time to my kingdom. Because I want to lift this woman up in her life and in every way, whether at work or whatever, in her life she's doing, whether be it business, whatever, she touches with her hands. But I saw uh, you moving in love. So God is saying develop the spirit of love. Develop that gift of love. Uh, it's a powerful thing that will make many people to come near you. Father, I pray for her right now. I speak that grace. I speak the glory of God upon her life. And I say that she is now free from today in the mighty name of Jesus. We glorify your name, O oh Lord. We thank you, Father. And we say it's done in Jesus' mighty name. May all the people say a big amen. amen. So if you, so please get your books. Get, 
or as you can get from that box, you put it at the end of the, all the books are there. Hallelujah. Can we stand on our feet? Let's celebrate the name of the Lord. Clap your hands unto Jesus. I, I am not a good singer, but we just want to dance. I want to teach you a Zimbabwean song. I don't know if you have heard the song called Tarira Uwo Neruwo Korwamari. You, do you know the song? All right. Maybe I'll teach you. All right. So when I go, Tarira uwo ne ruoko ruamwari, then you go, Tarira uwo ne. What it means is, look at the hand of God. What it has done, Tarira uwo ne ruoko ruamwari. Look and see the hand of God. What it has done. So when I go, Kutamba and Notamba, Kutambira Mwari, you, you just say, Tarira Uone, Tarira. So dance, Kutamba and Notamba, Kutambira Mwari, Kuimba and Noimba, Kuimbira Mwari. I can sing, Mwari is God, Kuimba is singing, Kutamba is dancing. Hallelujah, Kujamba and Nojamba, Kujambira Mwari. And you will be saying, Tarira uone, Tarira uone. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right, I hope we will. So I want some people to dance, but I'm not a very good singer, but that is a song which I love the most in Zimbabwe there. Tarira uone, Ruoko Ruamari. Tarira uone, Tarira uone, Tarira uone, Tarira. Continue. Tarira uone, Tarira uone, Tarira uone, Tarira uone, Tarira uone, Tarira uone, Tarira I don't know. All right, maybe let me start because so that you get my key. Tarira uone, Ruoko Ruamarin. Uone 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 tarira uone 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 tarira uone 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 utamba ndino tamba utambira mwari kuimba ndino imba kuimira mwari utamba ndire you are going to tarira tamba ndino tamba Everybody, everybody, let's go. Tarira, uone. 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 Tarira No chamba, everyone. Kuchambi na mwari. Chamba, chamba. Kuchamba ndi no chamba. Kuchambi na mwari. Kuchamba ndi no chamba. Kuchambi na mwari. Kuchamba ndi no chamba. Kuchambi na mwari. Kuimba ndi no imba. Kuimba na mwari. Kuposa ndi no. Everyone pose like. Kuposa ndi no posa. Kuposa na mwari. Kuposa ndi no posa. Kuposa na mwari. Now we want to shine. Hallelujah, go. Oh, kushaina and no shaina. Walk like kushaina ram. I'm not a grass. Kushaina and no shaina. Kushaina ramari. Kushaina and no shaina. Kushaina ramari. Uone 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 uone. Uone 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 uone. Tarira uone ruoko ruamari. God 
to bless you. <laughs> now we had taken you to Zimbabwe. Just a little bit. God bless you. We love you so much. Hallelujah. I just want to bless the church uh, so that there is a surge of increase. Hallelujah. Yeah, my voice is not of a singer. I'm sorry. I am a preacher. Hallelujah. Let me just, I just feel I need to, uh, to release a blessing as I go. It's now half past one. Uh, I don't know what time I was not told you, say, send, you end your service. Maybe 12 or I was guessing. As we, <laughs> as we go sometimes up to two, three, hallelujah. So I don't want you to be like you are at Igu Life in Blawai where people go home around two or so. So I want to pray. Just lift your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, from today, I receive all the keys, all the principles that were being taught. Lift your four fingers. Say, I receive the four streams of income in the name of Jesus in my life. Number two, I say, I receive the power to sacrifice, to deal with altars. I have understood today that life is about altars, battles on the altars. So I win on the altar in the name of Jesus by sacrifice, in the name of Jesus. Say, I lift my hand from today and I promise you that I will connect to the vision so that I move from bottles to wells in the name of Jesus. Lift your hand, say, I receive the key of giving a thousand to break the backbone of poverty for poverty is broken at a thousand in the name of Jesus. Say, I will have access to the tree of Solomon, to the fruit of prosperity that is heavily guarded by keepers in the spiritual realm by the art of giving a thousand. Say, from today, lift your left hand. Say, I will be a tither, a faithful tither. I will support the work of God. I will tithe my money and give my offerings. In the name of Jesus. Now lift both hands and say, I will stay under covering of my spiritual address. I shall not be a spiritual street kid. From today, in the name of Jesus, I receive the spirit of sonship. God introduces people by sonship. And, and I receive sonship. Lift your hand, say, I receive my spiritual address. Say, help me, O oh God, to be faithful and to rebuke anybody from today who will try to contaminate the well that I drink from. I will not allow anyone to gather clothes, their personalities around my feet. In the people stoning my father, they say, I will not keep clothes of people stoning my father. In the name of Jesus, say, I will not warm myself with the fire of wrong people. In the name of Jesus, around the fire of people that are criticizing the vision, say, from today, I will support the vision. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to move around, give seven people a high five. Say from today, I will support the vision. I will be committed. Yes, give them a high five. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I just wanted to uh, thank on behalf of my wife before I go, and my elders for taking care of us. Uh, we were so blessed being here. 
I hope you are also blessed by our presence. Do you still love the prophet? Yes. Do you still love me? Yes. <laughs> or maybe I stopped, I st stepped on your tomatoes in your garden. Hallelujah. Sorry if I stepped when I was preaching in your tomato garden and I crushed some of them. It's not because... I don't love you, but we are just speaking the word of God. Hallelujah. So thank you, Apostle. Thank you so much. And Mama, prophetess, for taking care of us from the time we were welcomed from the airport, the room where I stay, I'm staying in the hotel, very nice executive suite, which we were booked. Hallelujah. So I took photos, sent my wife that I'm being treated well, hallelujah, in this place. And she said, wow, I wish I was there, hallelujah. And we are so excited with the love that we are seeing in this church. We have fallen in love with this church. And I, I am expecting uh, most of you to follow the, your, your apostle to Zimbabwe so that you see what I was teaching and if, it's, if it is permissible, I will take you so that you see my 600 suits. So that when you come back, you say, that man was not lying. For sure, we saw it with our own eyes. Hallelujah. So we are so happy to have them in Bulawayo for the first time in Zimbabwe. Hallelujah. And Zimbabwe is excited to have your apostle. They can't wait for September at our church because my wife has been talking about this church and they can't wait to see. She fell in love with this ministry and she's talking a lot of things that those people are very blessed. So please, when you come, come dressed nice so that <laughs> you don't disappoint my wife. Because the way she's talking about Anamushu, do what, what, and uh, people are tired. They can't wait to see the South Africans coming. She came there and said, you people, you Zimbabweans, you think you have money, some of you keep quiet until the children of Apostle Humphrey comes. <laughs> they are not grasshoppers. Hallelujah. So say, I am not a grasshopper. <laughs> Do you believe it? Hallelujah. Can you clap hands for yourself? Believe it. You are not a grasshopper. Hallelujah. So we are waiting for you and we pray that nothing would disturb their coming. No funeral in the name of Jesus. I pray that no program comes along the way. They have to come. Uh, so, so you will see the 10,000 seater. I will take some of you through our offices so that you see some of the excellence. Then I will allow you to step on my pulpit, my stage. Hallelujah. And you take photos. Because there is no stage like that in this world. I'm telling you the truth. It's, it costed almost a million runs. I stand preaching on a million runs. So uh, uh, your father will be standing on that where there is a verified style which came from somewhere far in Italy there. And you enjoy yourself. So come and see those things. It's good to visit. Hallelujah. You might learn. We don't live in Zimbabwe. We live in heaven in Zimbabwe. So come and check us. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. We love you so much. Amen. Come on, can we just give the Lord the praise for the blessings released in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, you don't need to be cheap to be a child of God. Being a child of God should never be synonymous to being cheap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, with that microphone that is, is it's been using there, that particular one, personally, I didn't know until I went to, you know, and especially you say, you know, 
we are, we are done with broadcasting. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's nothing else to broadcast. <laughs> Come on, let's give the Lord the praise. Hallelujah.